I'm Keith Jewell, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Avengers number 674, a continuation of the Worlds Collide crossover. Can the Avengers and Champions save the Earth from colliding with Counter Earth? And what of Viv's new human form? Well, let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? So, as the comic opens up, our heroes are going deeper and deeper into the bowels of Counter Earth, attempting to find the High Evolutionary's Orbital Engine. Basically, it's a lot of fancy techno babble that means thing that will allow Counter-Earth to phase into real Earth and then blow it up. In a funny moment, the heroes remark just how deep Counter-Earth goes down, and Hercules, who probably steals the issue with this line, says it doesn't matter what Earth you're on, no matter what mythology you're dealing with, the worst, most horrible monsters and darkest secrets are usually always kept at the bottom. And hey, speaking of dark secrets, and I absolutely was, the emotional backbone of this crossover story involves the Vision and his daughter Viv, who has currently been turned human by the High Evolutionary. You see, Papa Vision chooses this moment of all times to let his daughter in on a very dark secret, and that is, hey, even before you were turned human, I had intended you to have the lifespan of a human when I created you. And also, in a nice little callback, when the Avengers were fighting Kang in a previous arc, Vision had come face to face with an older vision from millennia in the future. This ancient future vision didn't have a daughter, which means things aren't exactly gonna bode well for Viv right now. Also, hey, if that doesn't sound horrible enough, because she's human, she can now truly feel the crushing existential weight of what she's just learned. Now, the Avengers and Champions fight their way deeper and deeper underground, facing harsher and harsher resistance from the Animen. Viv is told by the others to stay back, after all, now that she's human, they're not exactly sure if she can even access her synthesoid powers anymore. But hey, wouldn't you know it, in her stubborn stumbling around, she ends up coming face to face with exactly what the heroes were looking for, only not in the form they were expecting. You see, Viv actually ends up finding the High Evolutionary's, well, for the lack of a better word, son. He's not given a name or anything. But he is given one hell of a tragic backstory. It seems that one day the High Evolutionary was getting sick of all of his anime, and as such, he wanted to create a new, more superior race of life, one that more closely resembled himself. The first one was his son. The only problem is the kid came out defective, and that is to say he came out compassionate. He actually liked the Animan and wanted to help them. And I'm sure if you're anything like me, it's right around here you see the comparisons that Wade is drawing between Viv and this Sunbot right here. Both created by fathers playing God, both having very complicated relationships with life and robot humanity. Viv tries to use this to her advantage, saying to the son that not all fathers are dillweeds. Despite all of his flaws, Viv loves her dad, and if they want to save both worlds, well, they're gonna have to get behind where he is right now. In a surprise twist, for once talking absolutely helps, the son is willing to help Viv save both Earth and Counter-Earth, but the Avengers show up, misunderstand the situation. The Sun is forced to defend himself, and a big fight breaks out. Wah, wah. Viv, though, heroically decides to go it alone and tamper with the orbital engine, even doing so, would mean the utter destruction of her soft, frail human form. Uh-oh. And yeah, just like that, to save two Earths, Viv ends up sacrificing herself. Well, okay, seemingly sacrificing herself, the heroes all mourn her death as a hero for having saved both Earth and Counter-Earth, and as the comic winds down, we see Viv walking around in a white room. Perhaps she's gone to the space between spaces, as the comic ends. So that's Avengers, everybody. And overall, I did enjoy it. I possibly enjoyed it more because they actually put all the world-saving action-adventure stuff on the back burner and instead focused on what I thought to be the most interesting part of this crossover event, and that is the Viv Vision family dynamic. It's all wonderfully Blade Runner, gives you a ton to chew on, and will probably please fans of the Tom King Vision series. It is, however, perhaps a tad unfortunate, though, that in this big crossover between these two big super teams, pretty much everyone who isn't Viv or Vision just ends up becoming white noise in the background. Overall, though, I'd feel comfortable giving this one a 7 out of 10. I was entertained by it. So that's Avengers, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, want to check out some of the other videos I have available from my channel. Then you can follow me on social media at Cape Jewel, so you're always up to speed on what I'm doing next. 
And hey, if you like what I do and are feeling in a supportive mood, please check me out on Patreon. I have a link down in the description, and patrons get exclusive access to videos and content before anyone else, and they can do so for as little as a dollar a month. And until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Joel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again next time. Bye bye